how does the size of the product compare to the size of one factor when multiplying by fractions? In this lesson, you will learn how multiplying by a fraction greater or less than one affects the final product. First, let's do some review. You already know that if we had the multiplication problem 3 times 4, what that means is essentially taking three items and multiplying it four times. If we set this up as an array, we would have one, two, three, four groups of three, which gives us 12. So three times four is 12. Or another way to look at it is that 12 is going to be four times as big as our original factor of three. We can call this scaling, where the final product, 12, is going to be scaled four times from three, or three is going to be four times as big. Three is going to be scaled four times to make a final product of 12. So now how does this work with fractions? How does scaling work with fractions? Let's see. Let's say we have this problem. The Ling family has four boxes of cereal. They ate three quarters of all the cereal during the week. Write an expression for three quarters of four boxes of cereal. So if we were to write that as a multiplication equation, that would just be three fourths of a box, or three fourths of all four boxes of cereal. So that'd be three fourths times four. Then we're asked, will the product be equal to, greater than, or less than 4? One way for us to figure this out, or for us to understand with scaling, let's just draw a model. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 boxes of cereal. Let's say they ate 3 quarters of all the cereal during the week. So let's just shade in 3 quarters of all the boxes. So now we've shaded in three quarters of all the cereal during the week. We see that there are still about one quarter has not been eaten yet, which means that our final product is going to be less than four. And the last way we can solve that is just to check it. Three-fourths times four is the same as three times four divided by four. By taking the numerator, multiplying it by the whole number, and then dividing by the numerator. Three times four is 12, divided by four is three. So the product is going to be less than four. Even without solving, we can see that when we take a whole number and multiply it by a fraction less than one, the product is going to be less than the, the factor that we're going to multiply the fraction by. Let's look at another problem where we're multiplying a fraction by another fraction. The Carter family has only one half of a box of cereal at the beginning of the week. There are three quarters of the one half box of cereal. They ate three quarters of the one half box of cereal. Write an expression to show three quarters of one half box of cereal. That would just be three fourths times one half. What we want to find out is will the product be equal to, greater than, or less than one half? Or will it be equal to, greater than, or less than three fourths? So we could solve this just by multiplying across, but let's try to understand with a model exactly what our final product is going to be in comparison with these two. So the first thing I want to do, 
let's shade in one half of all the blocks that we have because that's how much cereal that they had to start out with. Of these, they ate three quarters of it. One, two, three. So if we look at our double shaded boxes, we'll see that that's one, two, three, eighths is how much of the box of cereal they ate. Well, if we want to compare this to one half, we'll see that three eighths is less than one half since our shaded green is missing one eighth of a box that's smaller, one eighth smaller than our original shaded yellow. yellow. So three eighths, our final product is less than one half. Let's see if it's less than three quarters. For us to see if it's less than three quarters, let's draw another model. We'll shade in three quarters of our box in purpley pink here. There we go, we have shaded three quarters. Let's compare it to the three eighths that we had earlier. Also, is still in green. So we'll see that three eighths is also less than three quarters. So what we find is that when we have a fraction multiplied by another fraction, and both of the fractions are less than one, here we have one half is less than one, and three quarters is less than one. Our resultant factor. is going to be less than both of our, our resultant product is going to be less than both of our original factors. Now it's your turn. We have the problem, Lola is making cookies. She plans to multiply the recipe by three so she can make enough cookies for the whole class. If the recipe calls for two thirds cup of sugar, will she need more than two thirds or less than two thirds of a cup of sugar to make all the cookies? One way I like to solve this problem is to first write the multiplication expression and then draw a model. We are trying to find out if she needs more than two-thirds or less than two-thirds a cup of sugar to make all the cookies. These two steps will help you. Feel free to pause and resume when you want to check your answer. Okay, first things first, let's write a multiplication equation to solve this problem. That would be 2 thirds times 3. 2 thirds a cup of sugar multiplied by 3 to make 3 times as much. Now let's draw a model. If we were to use an area model, let's say we have 2 thirds of a cup measured by this model. And now we want to make 3 times as much. So we're going to multiply by 3, so we're going to have three area models. There's two. And there's three. And now what we've seen, if this is our original, cup of sugar that we needed to use, we now have three times as much, so Lola's going to need more than two-thirds of a cup of sugar to make all the cookies. Another way to look at that is to think of scaling again. When we have a fraction, two-thirds multiplied by a whole number greater than one, our final product is going to be x times as much bigger than our original product. If our original product in here is two-thirds, and our whole number is 3, our final product is going to be 3 times as much, or 3 times as big. 
In this lesson, you have learned how multiplying by a factor greater than or less than 1 affects the final product.